guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, do you know what tomorrow is? Hmm, they'll smell pretty, right? Oh, what? What is this? Because it kind of snuck up on me. So, you know. So, um, playing on that fact, what is the video going to be about today? What, what are we talking about today? Um, we're talking about your relationship with your dog because the love and bond that comes from a deep level of companionship and mutual respect that you have with your canine is not something that comes natural to everyone. And it actually didn't come natural for me and Riot either. So I'm going to um, break down a few very simple tips I think that will go a really long way in helping you understand how to build that awesome connection with your dog. So believe it or not, Raya and I did not always have this relationship. And I spent months and months and months after I brought him home really not liking him. Um, and that's just the honest truth of it. He was a very difficult puppy and our relationship was not love at first sight. Um, it was something that I actually had to work on. I really didn't understand at that time what went into building that bond and that relationship with your dog. Because that wasn't like an overnight thing or an instant relationship, I felt like, you know, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So anyway, at this point, you know, he's two years old now and we are, I'm, I'm closer to him than, um, than any other pet, dog, cat, you know, anything that I've ever had. Um, he definitely is my favorite. I know that, you know, yes, I have three dogs, but Raya is um, undeniably my little prince. Um, he is definitely my favorite. He's definitely the dog that I'm the closest to. And um, I'm gonna tell you how that happened. What I did to establish this amazing bond with this amazing creature um, who I've just come to absolutely adore. Uh, he is my whole world. I am also his entire world, and um, that's part of the secret. So let me break it down and give you guys some practical tips to um, get to this point in your relationship with your dog. One of the most important things that you will ever understand is when, where, why, and how to give affection to your dog. That's the constant, mm -hmm. oh, he's just a little baby. Oh, he's just my little baby. I just... I love him so much and I just, you know, okay, it's a bit much um, and it creates a really insecure, unstable dog. So giving too much affection to our dogs, treating our dogs like they're our children is actually really not a good thing. Um, so I'm just going to say it and I might get some crap for it, but you know, it's all right. I'm, I'm ready for it. Listen to me now. Your dog is not a human being and your dog is not a child. And to treat your dog like a human child is to do your dog an incredible misservice. Treat your dog like the canine that he is. Allow him to thrive as a dog. He is not a human being. This is very important when it comes to being overly affectionate with our dogs. Avoid this mistake. Go educate yourself some more on when, where, why, and how to give appropriate affection to your dog. And this is an awesome, awesome tip, especially if you're working with puppies, but it's really true for any, for any age because I actually still do this with Riot and Fury, um, and they're over two years old, is actually hand feeding your dog. Um, whether it's kibble, I mean, whatever it is, I hand feed my dogs and I certainly hand feed my puppies for many, many months. Um, that goes a long way in establishing that bond and that relationship. What it's doing is teaching your puppy that they can trust you, that everything good comes from you. Um, and it's just an incredible way to start off on the right foot. And so the last, but probably the most um, poignant tip I can give you, the most important one, the one that really makes all the difference in the world is going to be train with your dog. If you want to have a really close relationship with your dog, if you want your dog to look at you like you are their end all, be all, you know, like just the most important thing to them in the whole wide world, 
then you need to be a strong leader. You need to be someone who is investing in them, investing in, in spending time with them, in teaching them manners, teaching them how to be well behaved inside the home. This goes a long way because not only does it mean that a well-trained dog has more freedom to move about the world with you, um, in your home, but also your dog can be so well behaved that you can include them in whatever you do. You'll find that a well behaved dog is um, able to join you on your family vacations, for example, or um, your celebrations when you have people over. They don't have to be shoved off in a crate um, and neglected for hours on end because you're having a Super Bowl party, for example, and your dog can't be trusted to be out around food or behave well around guests. Um, all of these things are, are a domino effect into making sure that your dog is a part of your life. Um, and he can't do that. He can't be a part of your life unless he's well-trained and well-behaved. And that starts with you. You will see that all of that time that you're pouring into training with your dog will um, give you immeasurable benefits. Being able to take my dog um, literally anywhere with me has been such a joy. It has brought so much value um, and happiness to our lives. I mean, the fact that I can take my dog downtown Nashville to the fireworks show and him just be completely solid, completely stable, and be able to just be a part of whatever it is we're doing, wherever we're going, whatever we're doing as a family, solo, I mean, you name it. This dog is well-trained and can navigate his environment, can navigate the world right there by my side. Mm -hmm.